This program is brought to you by the Deeper Life Bible Church, located at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11. If you are not born of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, if you are not born again, you cannot relate with God that is in the Spirit. Without faith, it is impossible for you to be a Christian. Impossible for you. We want to extend an invitation to you if you have not yet registered to be a part of the Deeper Life Bible Reading Club. Do so as quickly as you can by going to the website at www.deeperlifeschoolofevangelism.org and look for the tab that says Bible Reading Club. Fill out the form that is there and you will have the Zoom ID and password right there. We are looking forward to share with you in our meetings. to encourage you to take your Bible right away, take your notebook, take your pen, and lend me your ears. <laughs> when people get sick, they go to the doctor, even in the midnight, yeah, and they can't sleep. I don't know whether you ever had a situation, either in your personal life, or a family member, or a friend of yours. That you have to run to the nearest health center, clinic, or hospital by 10 p.m., by 12 midnight, and you have to be there with your eyes open until 4 a.m., until 5, sometimes till daybreak, because you are in desperate need of the doctor's attention. Your friend is in desperate need of healing and, um, and recovery. Maybe your wife, pregnant, is in the labor room. You can't sleep. <laughs> so, how much should we be desperate when it comes to having our relationship with God cemented by the Word? Don't forget, I have always said this in all my programs, anywhere, at any time, that faith comes by hearing and that hearing is by the word of god romans chapter 10 verse 17 and i say that again faith comes by hearing and that hearing must be by the word of god what's as i've always asked why do we need faith simple answer very scriptural without faith hebrews 11 verse 6 without faith it is impossible to please god without faith it is impossible for you to be a christian impossible for you to be healed and be cured and be delivered from demonic oppression without faith you cannot receive the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. I say, without faith, you cannot overcome principalities and power. That's why you need faith. You need to grow your faith. Yeah, man. You need to nurture your faith. You need to exercise your faith. That's what the Bible says. Faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. And that hearing must be by the word of God. I told somebody yesterday who was asking me a question. Not in my church. I said, listen, if you see anybody praying for the sick, casting out devil, 
promising, uh, telling people, I will give you deliverance. And the person do not preach the word of God. Be suspicious of the power he uses. Let me repeat myself. And I mean it. If you see anybody, he may be called an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, uh, a bishop, whatever title is given to him. And you hear everybody rushing over there. And they say, that man is America wonder. If he lay hands on you, whatever be the disease, cancer will fly away. Glaucoma will go away. Arthritis will go away. Demon will go away. And that man don't preach the word of God to you. Before he begins to pray, be suspicious. I say, be suspicious. And we have many of them. I'm telling you, in Jamaica, in Africa, in Asia, in America, watch them. Watch them. You need to find out they are like the sons of Sceva. Act of the Apostle, chapter 19. The man who, who had evil spirits, they told the evil spirit, come out of him. And the man said, what? Why must I come out? They say, come out in the name that Jesus, you know, that Jesus, uh, Paul preached. The name of Jesus, because Paul preaches the name of Jesus. And the man said, come on. I know Jesus. I know Paul. You need to tell me who you are. And the man dealt with seven men. One dega dega man with demon. Mash up seven men and wounded all of them. And naked them. And everybody saw their nakedness. And they became afraid. Find time to read it. on. It's an, it's an interesting, a real story. Not a parable. Real incidents. You will see it in Acts of Apostles chapter 19. The reason why I'm saying that, be very careful of anyone. And I say it again. Anyone that you see him uh, praying for the sick, casting out devil, uh, rebuking this, rebuking that, and you hear it, that man walks wonder, he walks miracle. Be suspicious. I am suspicious of them. Why? The Bible says in the epistle of John, when the Holy Spirit led John, the beloved, the one that was very close to Jesus in 1 John chapter 4, he said, Beloved, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits in plural, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. John said this. And if you go to Matthew chapter 24, Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior, he has told us to be cautious eh, of the many prophets, many apostles, that will come to you trying to cast out devil. Listen to me. And I'm not joking. No. Somebody comes to you and give you prophecy. Or tell you a dream. And you can't find the connection of that dream and prophecy with the Holy Bible. <laughs> Be suspicious of that dream. Be suspicious of that prophecy. Be suspicious of that vision. You know what I'm, of course, you know what I'm dealing with. We're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I remember quite well when I was in the college. The lecturer that day was even an Anglican canon. 
Cannon speech. I still remember him very well. About 20 years ago, and he was telling us as students in the theological college. He said, the difference between magic and miracle is a very thin line. <laughs> Did you hear that? The difference between magic and miracle is a very thin line. And if you don't see that thin line, you will attribute magic for miracle. And you may say miracle is a magic. So you need spiritual discernment to see that thin line. Welcome, welcome. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your loving kindness. We bless your holy name because you are ever present. You are a wonderful God. You are to be honored, highly to be glorified. We bless your holy name, mighty Jehovah God. Father, we bless you indeed. We honor you indeed. We glorify your holy name indeed. And Father, we pray that this evening, as we shall be sharing this bread of life, you will minister to every listener in Jamaica. Even those who are sick, feeling depressed, feeling discouraged, feeling defeated, oh God, when they hear your word this night, you will rejuvenate them, reactivate them. I pray that those who be hearing your word this night, healing and health will be restored to them. Those who are hearing this night, who are battling with sin, struggling with sin, that this night they will receive the victory and they begin to have victory over temptation to sin because your word is powerful. When David wrote in the book of Psalm, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? But by taking heed unto thy word. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Oh God, I pray that all our listeners who are hearing this night, that your word will penetrate their hearts. Your word will empower their mind. Your word will give them the power to prevail over temptation, over sin, over Satan, and over the circumstances around them. Oh God, thank you. Let this night be another night of real fellowship, drawing nearer to, to the altar, and where you, God, God and God in heaven, you are glorified. Father, one more time, I pray for those who are backsliders, who were in the kingdom, but for the lust of the flesh, or the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life, they have gone astray, Father, as many of them as to be penitent, honestly penitent, Father, receive them, restore them, and reconcile them back into the kingdom. Oh God, I pray for believers. Believers who are wavering. Father, breathe into them and give them that stability of faith, consistent walk with you, and glorify your holy name. Father, thank you. Thank you again for your mercy, for your love, for your goodness.
touch this our island of Jamaica. Heal our island of Jamaica. We must give you thanks for the improvements in the reporting of the medical departments. We thank you for the reduced number of those who are dying and the infections of those who are positive. Lord, we pray that this thing will be a past tense in few months' time. Father, let it be so. So that people can get back to their life again. We know all of this is as a result of human sins. But Lord, as we continue to preach the gospel, let righteousness that exalt a nation prevail in this country. And let the powers of darkness be somersaulted. The powers of evil be somersaulted. All those who practice divination, necromancy, witchcraft. Father, you know what they do in the, in the dark world. Some assault their activities in this country. And set the captives free. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. There are nine fruits of the Spirit that were mentioned by Paul the Apostle. At the same time, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. But let me say, there are more than nine fruits of the Spirit. In fact, many of them, but he specifically, maybe for teaching's sake, and at least as a guide, so he gave us the nine fruit of the spirit and he did mention to us that it is by the spirit of an individual will be able to know if that person is actually a child of god or a servant of god you don't know who is a child of god by the name of their denomination the name of their church or the or how they were baptized when they were baptized, all of those ones are not relevant. Jesus said, Ye shall know them by their fruit. Matthew chapter 7. And also, we are told to test every spirit. Paul did mention um, in Galatians chapter 5, um, from verses 22 down to 25, that these are the evidences of connection with God. Remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ Jesus, it's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when a person becomes genuinely born again as a result of repentance, uh, renouncing the sin, receiving atonement from God through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, and the person by faith is reconciled unto God. That individual is restored into relationship with God because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all. No one is born a Christian. No one is born righteous. Some person might try to convince themselves that they were born into the Christian faith. Or some may even say they have been Christian from childhood. It's a lie. Nobody has been, nobody was a Christian from the mother's womb. The book of Job is very clear. Job said, all men and all mankind born by a woman, they are born with sin in their life. Yeah? And you know, some also said it. If you look at Job, let me just quickly show you. In Job chapter 14, verse 1, it says, It says, Man that is born of a woman is for a few days and is full of trouble. But the one that will point uh, very uh, clearly is verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? He said, Not one. You know, all human beings defiled, corrupted, 
and uh, and contaminated by the devil. And of course, you are familiar with uh, what the book of Psalms says. You say, in sin eh, did my mother conceive me. Yeah, man. In sin did my mother conceive me. Look at it in Psalm 51 uh, um, from verse, verse, verse 5. You say, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Eh? In sin. So he was now praying, Lord, purge me so I can become acceptable to you. Nobody was born a Christian. Nobody was born clean. Nobody was born holy. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you want the favor of God in your life, if you want the blessings of God in your life, if you want to enjoy the protection of God in your life, you have to repent of sin, renounce sin, and ask God for remission. Remission means that Jesus becomes your substitute on the cross. By the blood is shed, then he takes over your sin. But you have to believe it. Don't say, but I don't see it. Just have to believe it. For he that cometh to God, Hebrews 11 verse 6, eh? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Eh? Because he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to believe that what God said is, tr is true and real. Alright, so we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. We did mention that Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 22 did mention when we become born again, we should walk in the Spirit eh? and allow also the fruit of the Spirit to grow. It's something that you have to nurture. Practice it. Um, that's chapter 5 from verse 22. And the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, uh, nine of them. And he said, and they, in verse 24, that are in Christ, they have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Remember, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 verse 24. Yeah? And for you to worship God in an acceptable way, pleasing way, you must be born of the spirit. John chapter 3 verses 3, 5 and 7. If you are not born of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, if you are not born again, you cannot relate with God that is in the spirit. That's why I say worship God in spirit and in truth. So you have to be in spirit. Now, we're talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. There is the fruit, there is the gift. Come to that first Corinthians and then from there we quickly touch the other area. I spoke to you last week that come to first Corinthians 12. It says here, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. In other words, don't choose to be ignorant of the gift of the Spirit. It is by the gift of the Spirit you'll be able to discern the true gifts of God in people. And you are able to know those who will be practicing obia and detect those who are using magic. Because one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the discerning of spirits. You discern spirits. Yeah, man. Somebody may be singing, but singing in the flesh. You'll be able to know whether he's just singing to big up himself or herself, advertise herself. Huh? Somebody might be preaching and running around the whole place. It's either he's preaching for God or he's preaching for himself. 
and somebody may be speaking in tongues. It could just be a gimmicking of somebody else's tongue. But when you have the gift of designing spirits, you are able to detect all of those tricks. I can tell you. I pray you, you just have to ask God to give you that gift. Because he made it very clear to us here. I counted it for you last week also. Huh? When he was telling us about the various um, spiritual gifts. Look at it from verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirits. And there are differences of administration. But the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Mm -hmm. And it says from verse, verse 8. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. That's one. Another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, verse 9. Eh? Another faith by the same Spirit. And another the gift of healing by the same Spirit. And to another the working of miracle by the same Spirit. To another prophecy. And to another designing of spirits. And to another diverse kinds of tongues. And to another the interpretation of tongues. Hello, here is your tonic for today with Dr. W. F. Kumuyi. You are hearing about the love of God for you. You might be the vilest of all sinners. You might be at the lowest point of your life. You might be so sick as if there is no hell. The hands of Satan and of demons might be around your neck. That place where you are, the Lord will touch you. The Lord will raise you up. The Lord will turn your life around. God sent me to you that those tears are wiped away. That those blind eyes will be opened. He sent me to you to get you out of that wheelchair. He knows what you are suffering. He knows what you are going through. And he said, your day has come. Something good is coming your way. A miracle will drop on your head. That cancer will dry up. That impossibility will be possible. And that incurable disease will vanish away. You will look at yourself. You'll be a wonder to yourself. You'll be a wonder to your neighbors. You'll be a wonder to your parents. I will hear your testimony. And I will carry your testimony back to the Lord. And I will return with joy. In Jesus' name I pray. And that's your tonic for today with Dr. W.F. Kumi. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We hope this program was a blessing to you. Feel free to call us for prayer and counseling at 876-923-1040. Or 876-631-7108. Or you can WhatsApp us at 876-451-8509. You can also visit our church location at 4C Norwich Avenue, Kingston 11 on Sundays at 9 a.m. You can follow us on our social media platforms for more updates and sermons on Facebook at Deeper Life Bible Church Jamaica, on Instagram at Deeper Life Jamaica, on YouTube at Kingdom Life is Deeper Life. Join us next time for the Revival of Truth broadcast. Hey!